Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 13 of speaking and speech with Kiki. I hope that you're all doing well and that you got a chance to do the homework. If you did, you may have noticed they talked about, they gave one piece of advice that I didn't mention, which was to keep a journal or a log of your anecdotes. I thought that was a really good idea because, let's face it, we're, we're always getting older. Every day we're getting older. And when you have a good story, first of all, writing it down is good for you. But second of all, having a log helps you keep track of all those memories. You could have an interesting story that would make a perfect anecdote, but you don't keep track of it, and so it's gone. All right, so I strongly suggest following that piece of advice. I think it's good. Today we're going to talk about active listening and how to build your vocabulary. So to start off, I'd like to say when you're giving a presentation, when you're at a meeting, or when you're talking to another person, be it a friend, be it, a, be it somebody you just want to communicate with, we want them to actively listen to what we're saying, to get that, to be worthy of that kind of listening that is not just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, polite, yes, yes, go ahead, whatever, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Not just polite nodding, but actually listening to what you're saying. If you want to have that, then you should be able to give that. Right? Right? Okay. So, <laughs> to, to learn how to be an active listener is, it's literally a life-changing event. It's not easy. Don't beat yourself up if you can't do it the first million times. I'm still learning how to do it. I'm still trying. For me, there's a language problem, so I can only do it about 50% of the time. And then I'm just like, what did they say? I didn't understand that last part. You know, there's a language issue. But in general, even if you're speaking the same language, being an active listener is not easy. It takes a lot of patience and mindfulness. So to practice that, first of all, my first suggestion is face your listener. I find it difficult to be on the phone and pay attention to what people are saying to the same degree as when I'm speaking to them face to face. If you are discussing something with somebody and you live in a different country, you have no choice but to, to speak on the phone. If it starts to get to a serious point, I suggest FaceTime or something like video chat. If you're video chatting, you're paying attention and you're actively listening. When I talk to my family, family at home, always in the background are the noises of food being made, dishes being washed. I know what they're doing. They're, they're they're doing something and listening. That's my family. I don't want to be like that. I want to stop what I'm doing. I want to listen to what they're saying. I want to give them the time of day. And I, I find that doing that also makes our conversations better. It makes them better because my mind is not just wandering off, but I'm actually listening to what they're saying and I'm responding. Okay. Um, Another piece of advice is to relax. If you're in a very loud restaurant or if you have to use the bathroom and the person is in the middle of their really important message and you just you, but you can't focus because you've got to go to the bathroom, excuse yourself, get, get rid of the problem, use the, use the bathroom and come back even if it takes a minute because you want to be present, because you want to be listening, you don't want to be thinking, I need to go to the bathroom, I need to go to the bathroom, right? You want to be hearing what they're saying. Okay. Keep an open mind. I find one of the problems for keeping an open mind is that we are literally always judging people. We're thinking, oh, well, why did you do that? I would never have done that. When you're actively listening, one of the one of the things you have to learn to let go of is that judgmental, I would have done, 
you should have done, you could have done. All of those things have to be put on, aside and say, I wasn't in that position. I couldn't judge what I would do unless I was in that position. So to say now, after it's finished, you could have, you should have, it's not helpful and it sounds disrespectful and judgmental. That's done. What did we learn from it and how can we move forward? Right? Those are positive ways of thinking about it, to be mindful of the other person, to be respectful of their decisions during difficult choices. That's fair, I think. All right. Try to imagine what the speaker is saying. When somebody is talking to you, it's very easy to think about what you want for dinner, to think about things you need to buy, whatever. It's very, it's harder to imagine what they're talking about especially when they're talking in a diff in a not in your non-native language that's one of the reasons i think when you are talking to non-natives is to always have a signal between you two that you agree on that says oh, i'm losing track of what you're saying can you repeat it again just a hand up or some kind of signal that you agree on where you, you can say, oh, it's too fast, can you say it slower? Because if you can imagine what the other person is saying, then you're more sympathetic, you're more empathetic to that person in their situation and in their way of thinking, and that's access to another person you didn't have before, right? An understanding of somebody that means you guys are getting closer, okay? When you speak, you'll change the way you speak to fit that person, and then that person will be able to hear you and understand you better, okay? This is a give and take, okay? Good. Don't interrupt and don't try to solve their problems. So those are two big ones. Not interrupting is difficult, especially when you want them to slow down or you didn't understand something. It's that uncomfortable part for everybody, natives and non-natives. You have to wait for the person to slow down and pause. And then you say, oh, before you go on, can you explain to me what, what, it, what happened with ABC? I didn't quite understand that, right? Okay. And... Another not interrupting is when somebody is telling a story and you ask them a question, but instead of a question about can you explain it, can you clarify, those kinds of questions, you ask them a question that changes the direction of the conversation. They're talking to you about, oh, I was at a store yesterday, I, was, I met a friend, oh, well, who's that friend? Suddenly, their story was going this direction, and your question drove them to another direction. That happens. Don't worry, that happens. Just at the end, say, okay, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, can you tell me more about your story? And try to get back to what they were saying. Because it's their story. And so if you can not ask that question that changes the direction, great. But if you did ask it, be aware and go back to the original story. Don't solve people's problems for them is the same as saying, if somebody doesn't ask you for advice, then don't tell them, don't give them free advice. You can if you want, that's your agenda, but I strongly suggest that you don't because what happens is you listen, you hear a problem, and you say, I know what they should do. This is what I would do. And then suddenly you're waiting to talk. You're not listening anymore. You're just waiting to give them the solution to their problem. Which, one, they may have already tried. Two, your solution is probably, I mean, it's, it may be the one, the one thing that they needed. But giving people the answer to their problems isn't always what they want. I mean, they can't always hear the answer, even if it's the right answer, unless they're ready to hear the answer. If they're ready to hear the answer, then they're asking you for advice. That's when you give it to them. If they're not asking you for advice, they're 
probably not going to hear what you have to say anyway. So don't create the cycle of, I've got the answer, and then just wait for the pause so that you can give them the answer. Just don't do it. Free your mind from that cycle and just listen to what they're actually saying. Okay.